Now I will talk about maintenance of this clock. The finish on it is polyurethane, a thin coat of polyurethane varnish, which will last indefinitely uh, as long as the clock is well cared for and kept in a, in a dry enough place. It, uh, it won't be any problem with the finish. You don't have to redo it or re-oil it or anything like that. So that just leaves dusting occasionally as desired and lubrication, which I'll talk about first. Uh, nothing on the clock needs to be lubricated unless there is a, a specific uh, issue that arises. And usually that would be if there's a, if it's extremely humid, humid weather, the outer edge of this wheel, <coughs> this wheel may have a, a bit more friction on it. And you can see as the clock is running, I'll zoom up a little bit, the, those escapement pallets, the little, like the little legs, or the little feet on the legs, they skim along the edge of that wheel. You can see as it releases there, comes back down, and now it's kind of sliding along the edge of the wheel. And that uh, this escapement pallet is made of lignum vitae. It's extremely dense uh, type of wood that's self-lubricating. It has its own natural oils, so it will last a very long time. I also use that type of wood in the, the pivots like the little bearings uh, on the wheels, uh, which are also then lubricated with powdered graphite. But as I was saying, in extremely humid weather, the only time you may want to do some lubrication is if you notice the clock just doesn't seem to be, the pendulum doesn't seem to be swinging as far and just kind of barely releases like that. Or maybe the, maybe the clock mysteriously stops altogether. You don't know, there's no obvious reason why. And you start it up and it starts ticking like normal, but it just seems to kind of slow down. The, the pendulum sort of slows down like that and, until it's barely releasing. And then sometimes maybe will not release at all and then the clock will stop then I would recommend using some powdered, not powdered graphite, using some, some uh, pure silicone spray, which I have here in a can, it's just something you get at the hardware store. I recommend the pure silicone because that doesn't leave a, any kind of a white chalky residue like some other lubricants can do at times. And what I do is I just spray it on, I have an applicator that I use. You can also just use a cotton swab put a cloth behind it first so you don't get spray all over and then you just soak up that applicator and rub it along the outer edge of this wheel. You can just let the clock run as you rub it on the, this outer edge and that will, that will make that outer surface a lot more slippery and, and should fix the, the issue with the, the pendulum slowing down in humid weather. It doesn't, if it, if it doesn't need to be done, you don't need to do it. In other words, if the clock isn't stopping, there's no problem. Uh, this isn't something that you, you need to do unless there is a particular need for it. And while you're at it, you can also put a little, little on the on this gear here. You don't need to you don't need to put it on all the all the teeth of this main wheel. But if you just get it on on the teeth of this pinion here, the, the six teeth that it has, that will add a, make it uh, that will reduce the the friction there as well. I don't think you need to try to get it into the 
into the bearings in here on the pivots there, like I said, they're already lubricated with powdered graphite, and so they should be fine. Um, another thing to look for, if the clock, like I said, if it, if it stops mysteriously, I'll just get closer here. Just look and make sure everything is, you can see how this has play in it. Okay. End shake, it's called, on this on this uh, gear shaft. Just make sure that there's that, that you can wiggle it like that. That there's a, there should be a lot of extra clearance, a lot of extra play in it. Same with the main the main wheel shaft. Uh, when I build this clock, I leave a lot of extra space here, a lot of extra clearance to accommodate for changing in weather. If, if this whole, if this uh, entire frame, you know, it can, that can swell and shrink somewhat with changing humidity uh, or from summer to winter, that kind of thing. So I leave a lot of extra clearance to accommodate for that. So that should never, never be a problem, but again, that would be something to look for if the clock were to stop. Now I'll talk about uh, about dusting, and all I've ever done is I just use a an old T-shirt, just a, a cloth, and, and get in there and start rubbing on it. Um, you can you can feel free to get in here and and work around on the moving parts. The only thing to be careful of is if you're dusting, like on, on these escapement levers here, just try to avoid lifting up both levers and letting the letting it freewheel like that. Because then if you let the, le the lever drop, and it's spinning fast, if it's spinning too fast and it drops, that could damage it. So just, uh, you can just hang on to the wheel, run your dust cloth around. Uh, also, you may have, there may be other types of dusting uh, equipment, like a, you know, a feather duster or something like that, probably would be a good thing to try. I, I never have bothered, I just have always used a cloth. I even get in between the gear teeth with that sometimes, if I feel it needs dusting. You could, you could just let the clock wind down, you know, let the weight wind all the way down so that the gears don't want to turn while you're dusting it. That might be the, that might be the best thing to do. And that about covers it as far as the, the ongoing maintenance is concerned. <laughs>